Hi friends, today will be a video about increasing the power of the power bank. I know very well that there will be people who would ask, why? It's easier to buy a more powerful one, it makes no sense and so on. I'll answer right away, it makes sense, at least for me, since rework takes about half an hour, doesn't require any expenses at all, and as a result we get a power bank whose capacity is increased twice. I want to specify an important point. We actually increase the output current and power of the bank as a whole. You shouldn't confuse this with the capacity. The capacity could be increased simply by adding batteries. But we won't touch them. All the alteration will affect only the electronic part of the device. I have such a bank for 23 amps hour. It was bought without batteries. I added them later. The batteries were taken from laptops but selected the better ones. Here are 10 cans, each with an average capacity of about 2300 mAh. The bank has three USB outputs and all of them are connected in parallel. In general, the maximum current that it can give at the output is about 2.2 amps, which is enough to charge one modern smartphone. But if you connect two at the same time, then the bank will turn off. I need to increase the output current from 2.2 to at least 4 amps, which is enough for two smartphones, maybe even for three. The power bank is good. I tested it and unlike the cheap options, here is installed a very good inverter board with high efficiency and large surface for heat dissipation. Yes, it gives out only 5 volts and there is no Type-C connector, but it fits perfectly for most phones, so I think it's worth to rework it. Here we have one button, a battery indicator, three USB outputs for connecting a consumer, and a micro USB socket for charging the bank itself. First, let's understand the capabilities of this power bank. I connect to the output a homemade electronic current load and an accurate USB meter. As you can see, we have about 2.2 amps and this taking into account losses of the USB contacts. The manufacturer claims a current of 2.4 amps and this seems to be true. If there weren't so many USB connections, I think the device would have given out these 2.4 amps. Now we disassemble the housing. It is latched and this is a big drawback. When disassembling, it is difficult not to break something. Inside are 10 batteries of 18650 form factor connected in parallel. Next is the board of the converter itself. I think everyone knows that a power bank is nothing more than a voltage converter which increases the voltage from lithium batteries to 5 volts or more depending on the purpose. The converter can also be stepped down if the batteries are connected in series. The board is large enough, but there aren't many components on it. Here, I ask you to pay special attention because I'm sure that many of you have never seen such a construction of a power bank. If your projects need printed plates, we recommend the GLC PCB side. This is one of the largest PCB manufacturing plants. It's easy. Download your Gerber file, select the options you need, pay for the order and wait for the parcels. The factory will produce printed circuit boards of any shape and complexity. The price starts from $2 for 10 pieces. A link to purchase of GLC PCB will be found in the description. As a rule, at ordinary power banks, the board has a multifunctional chip on which the converter and the battery charging system are built. In some cases, the same chip can be a display controller, if any. Converters in classic circuits look like this an ordinary booster. The chip has a PWM controller with a power transistor. When it is open, energy is pumped into the choke. When it is closed, the choke gives up accumulated energy in the form of the self-inductance burst, and the voltage of self-induction is higher than the supply voltage. Then, through the Schottky rectifier diode, the voltage is accumulated in the output capacitor. Through the feedback loop, the output voltage is constantly monitored and the duration of the control pulses is changed. In such a converter, we have significant losses in the Schottky diet. In this converter, it simply doesn't exist. Here, a synchronous boost converter with a very high efficiency is assembled. At the board installed a multifunctional chip, which includes a PWM controller and a charge controller and also provides an indication. Next, we have power element, a transistor. 
In fact, in this housing, there are two field effect transistors, one P-channel and the other N-channel. We also have a choke and another field effect transistor at the output. On it, overload protection for all ports is built. Ports, as already mentioned, are parallel. Well, it's also worth paying attention to a couple of current sensors. We will come back to them later. Before the alteration, I made some measurements. In particular, I measured the efficiency of the converter at the current of 1 ampere, applying to the input of 4.2 volts from the laboratory power supply. As you can see, the input consumption is 5.85 watts. The output is 5.26. Efficiency is 88% and this is a high indicator taking into account losses on contacts. Without these losses, efficiency would exceed 90%. After the rework, we will do the same test to see if we have degraded the efficiency of the converter. I took an oscillogram from the gate of the N-channel MOSFET and as we see, the converter works at a frequency of about 200 kHz, filling 20%. Since there is a feedback, this parameter will increase as the output power increases. We need to replace the choke out with the current protection and maybe to replace the indicated field effect transistors. Next, I start to remove the components and began with the choke and assembly of two FETs. The choke must be replaced since it is wound with a 0.5 mm wire and physically cannot withstand the currents we need. But I hastened with the assembly of FETs, we can try with it. This is a fairly powerful assembly BR4606. In fact, the same AO4606. There are N-channel and P-channel transistors with a drain current of 6.5 amperes. The only thing that bothers is the open channel resistance of 30 to 40 milliohms. In case of replacement, I will have to put two separate transistors, because I don't have more powerful assemblies in such housing. Given that there isn't much space on the board, I decided to return it to its place. I decided not to touch the transistor in the output protection circuit. According to the datasheet, it is for 2.9 amps, pulse current up to 10A, open channel resistance less than 45 milliohm. Yes, it's rather weak, but it works as a switch, so I hope that it can withstand overloads. There are two current sensors on the board with the same resistance of 0.025 ohm. Experimentally reduce their resistance by half. Next, I measured the inductance of the choke and it was 5 microhenry. I took such a core of powdered iron and wound a new choke. The dimensions of the core are now in front of you. The winding is done with double wire of 0.5 mm. The inductance is the same as of the initial choke. I soldered all the components. The choke had to be adapted somehow. Clean the flux and check the quality of the solder. After all these manipulations, we start the converter, but we don't connect it to the battery. At first, we connect to the laboratory unit on which it is desirable to limit the current of 100 mA. If the board starts up and there is no excessive current consumption, then we can connect it to the batteries. But first, I will measure the efficiency. Before alteration at an output current of 1 A, the efficiency was 88%. After the rework, under the same conditions, the efficiency was approximately 86%, no noticeable deterioration. Well, now let's see what we got. The maximum current before remaking was 2.2 amps. Current is 2 amps, output voltage stably 5 volts. At 2.5 amps, everything is fine. At 3 amps, the same. At 3.3 amps, Everything is fine. At current of 4 amps, is still not bad. There is some voltage drop, but not very critical. What is the efficiency at maximum current? 73 to 75%? Alas, I forgot to shot that measurement, and when I remembered, everything was already assembled, and I didn't want to open the housing again and risk to break the latches. The task set has been completed, but there is a problem. With increasing power, heating increases too. So we will face with all the ensuing consequences. It is not easy to deal with this because the dimensions of the board are small. Alternatively, we can additionally tin a large foil space on the back of the board or solder a copper plate to it. In general, I haven't decided yet. 
Thus, we got a worthy power bank that can charge two or even three modern smartphones at once, and this is an important plus. I was repeatedly in a situation when I urgently needed to charge several gadgets, but the bank doesn't pull, although it has a couple or even four USB outputs. Of course, there are good expensive banks that give such currents at the output, but why buy a new when you can redo the old one in half an hour? That's all today. All the necessary links are always in the description. Now I say goodbye. Until next time. With you as always was Kassian TV.